Okay, good day everyone. So this is also part of your training. It's about manifestations of gender bias, wherein you will be able to know whether gender bias exists. Okay. All right, so you can see here in our slide, gender issues and gender bias, framework of understanding the origins of gender issues. Now you can see here that the major problem that we are facing is gender inequality. But that one started with gender discrimination. And then gender discrimination also started with gender bias. And then you can see there that it has started from gender stereotyping. So our aim is to eliminate the, the root cause. Since we wanted to eliminate the, the gender inequality, gender discrimination, and gender bias, so we have to eliminate gender stereotyping. It's like para ano yan eh, parang sa puno. Pag nagtanggal ka ng dahon, mabubuhay pa rin. Pag nagputol ka ng sanga, mabubuhay pa rin. Pag nagputol ka ng trunk, meron pa rin possibility na mabuhay. Pero pag nagtanggal ka ng ugat, so dun pa lang tutumba or mamamatay yung puno. So in our own way, like for example in education, what we are trying to eliminate here is gender stereotypes so that we can contribute in finally eliminating gender inequality. Okay, so let's uh, discuss. So in the next illustration, here is an example of gender stereotype, which may lead to gender bias and then eventually to discrimination and inequality. So you can see in the illustration, boys are doctors. Girls are nurses. So because of your of being male and being female, na ka assign na yung magiging future mo or magiging profession mo. Okay? So that is an example of gender stereotype which may lead to bias and also discrimination. They might prefer in hiring process. They might now prefer girls. Pag nursing, they might prefer girls. Pag Doctors naman, they might prefer boys because of our gender stereotypes. Okay, another example here. Of course, we wanted to have an equality between girls and boys and also other genders. But look at the textbook. So you can see here in the illustration, we are aiming for equality. However, the learning materials that we have will not aid us to achieve that equality. So, we also have to look into the textbooks or we have to look into the materials that we are using kung meron nga bang gender bias. Okay, another example of gender stereotypes. So, you can see here, Kinder Joy. Sino sa inyo may mga kapatid? Or yung iba, baka may anak na na they love Kinder Joy surprises. So, you can see meron niyang color blue at saka meron color pink. Na, gandun pa rin yung stereotypes na this set of toys are only for boys. And this set of toys are only for girls. So, see, makikita nyo na very, um, makikita nyo na very observable pa rin ang gender stereotypes in different areas of our lives. Here are also examples, mga terms lang to, which are also considered as stereotypes. Men are stronger than women. So, paano pag kailangan ng mga parang mas kailangan ng strength na trabaho? They might prefer men over women. Then women are soft and weak. Men are insensitive. Women are very sensitive. Those are just examples of gender stereotypes, which may eventually uh, result to a greater impact. Hindi lang siya natatapos sa stereotyping. So we are also trying to have this training because sometimes uh, normal na sa atin yung mga ganong stereotypes. That's why we have this what we call unconscious bias. That there is existing gender bias, but since we are used to it, nagiging unconscious na tayo na meron palang ganun, na meron palang bias, na meron palang discrimination, okay? So, what we are trying to do now is to re-educate you so that we will be able to identify kung may bias na ma, may bias na ba, and discrimination and inequality. Marginalization in terms of economics, or we call this economic marginalization. Here, the process which forces women out into the periphery of economic and social life on the periphery of decision-making process, diminishing the value of the activities in which they engage. So, yun nga, kapag in the hiring process, hindi ka naman natanggap dahil babae ka, na marginalize ka na economically. Kasi you cannot participate in economic or economic activities. So, hindi ka na nabigyan ng trabaho dahil babae ka. Okay. 
So that is an economic marginalization. So aside from that, there are still countries wherein mababa pa rin ang sahod para sa mga babae. Okay, but here are also some situations which is telling us of economic marginalization. We have women are last to be hired, first to be fired. They are given limited opportunities. Sometimes they are being hired in exchange of sexual favor. So meron pa rin ganyan nangyayari. Then under or non-valuation or recognition of women's work. Iba sa isang organization, meron naman na-accomplish yung babae. If they are not valued or they are not recognized na yun yung gawa nila, there is also gender bias in terms of economics. Yan, gender bias as I have mentioned, gender bias in hiring dahil nga sa ating gender stereotypes that some professions are for male, so they prefer male. Some professions are for female, so they will prefer female. So you can see the gender stereotypes can go a long way. Unad label lang sila. Pero eventually it could lead to bias at it could lead to economic marginalization. Okay? Kaya in our own way, try natin eliminate yung stereotypes. So our vision is to have this equal pay for work of equal value, either it male um, or female professionals, and the economic independence, and then to have equal economic opportunities. Then another problem of women. So you can see here, sometimes there's a promotion, meron ding inequality. Why? Because yung mga lalaki, wala sila masyadong burdens. It, they can concentrate the sa work nila. But still, existing pa rin to. Women are still multiple burdened. So marami pa rin mga professionals na babae na, yeah, they have opportunities. They are professionals. However, in terms of promotion, medyo naglalag behind sila because of multiple burdens. But of course, right now, marami naman tayong pwede makatulong sa atin to somehow ease the burdens that we are having. Ayun nga, sinasabi, pwede namang equal responsibilities shared within the family. So, sa pag-aalaga ng bata, hindi na ngayon lang babae or ang nag-aalaga, nag-asikaso ng bahay. It's already a shared responsibility. Okay, another manifestation of gender bias would be subordination or political subordination. Yung kanina sinabi ko sa inyo, in a school organization, what we are trying to have would be equal participation din ng male and female, para in the making decisions, pareho silang represented. Same with, uh, let's say, um, yung buong country naman. Meron pa rin tayong subordination in political. Although lahat na yun nakakaboto, male, female, but our representations, mas marami pa rin represented, representations ang mga lalaki. So what could be the effect? The effects could be on the decision-making process. Are they considering kung kinoconsider ba nila yung kapakanan ng mga babae. That's why, yun nga, we are trying to have equal representation para sa decision-making, equal din. Like, hindi rin naman maganda, di ba? Puro babae naman. Dahil nga, we have mentioned that gender sensitivity is not anti-male. Hindi natin tinatalo or kinakalaban ang mga lalaki. Ang tinatry lang natin gawin dito is to have equal opportunities also. So, pangit din kapag puro babae naman yung leaders natin. So, baka hindi naman natin ma-decisionan ma or ma-consider ang rights ng mga lalaki. Okay? So, equality would be uh, a lot better. Okay, bakit ba tayo nagkaroon ng political subordination na yan? So, why? It has started with the gender stereotypes like this. Women are weak. They are oppressed. They are known to be followers. They are second class. They are owned. So, sinasabi ko sa inyo, nagsisimula lagi sa stereotypes. Like, men are strong. They can dominate. They are leaders. They are always first. They are owners. So, dahil lang doon, nagkaroon na ngayon ng political subordination. Like, mas may marami ng political powers ang mga lalaki because of those gender stereotypes. Okay? So, ngayon, hindi tayo strong, hindi tayo weak, hindi tayo leaders because we are male and female. We are strong, we are leaders, 
Because we are on our own. Hindi dahil sa pagiging babae or pagiging lalaki natin. Basta, it's our ability. Okay? Ang vision natin for the political subordination is this one. Quality, participation in decision-making process, and recognition also of ca capabilities of women in terms of leadership. So those are some examples of gender bias manifestations. Now, another example of gender bias manifestation would be violence against women. So, so this is defined as an act of instilling fear and inflicting pain with the aim to injure or abuse women. So you can see here in the graph. So now I want you to pay attention on the graph. So looking at the graph, yeah, you pick. It uh, refers to cats, bruises, aches, your orange eye injuries, deep wounds, and then yellow lost job and source of income. And then blue had depression, anxiety, anger. Blue attempted, in dark, darker blue attempted to commit suicide. And green, any of these consequences. If we will not consider the green, anong pinakamataas dyan? So you have physical, sexual, and physical or sexual. Ang pinakamataas dyan ay yung Anong color but a light blue? Okay. Light blue. Had depression, anxiety, anger, and sleep sleeplessness. So when it comes to violence, it's not only physical. There are different types of violence against women and children. So yeah, meron tayong physical, sexual violence. We also have emotional abuse. We also have using isolation, minimizing, denying, and blaming. Then using children, using male privilege. Then also using economic abuse. Violence against women is not only physical. So marami yan. If you can see here, uh, discuss natin isa-isa para makikita nyo yung gender bias manifestation or gender discrimination. So ang violence kasi is considered to be a manifestation also of gender bias kasi ang violence, it has rooted with the notion that women are weak and men are strong. And then, yung may, may authority ang mga lalaki over sa mga babae. So, doon nagsimula yung sa stereotypes na yan. Kaya tayo, parang we are, ang mga babae, parang they are vulnerable. So, tanggalin natin yung gender stereotype na yun. Okay? But moving on, we'll just discuss some of this violence, types of violence. Let's say, physical violence. Yeah, making her afraid by using looks, actions, gestures. Smashing things, destroying. So, yung pagdadabog, yung pagtatapon ng mga gamit, that's already violence against women. Yung pagtatapon ng mga gamit sa bahay, ba? nag-away yung mag-asawa. Tapos, hindi man siya sinasaktan, pero nagtatapon ng gamit, nagsisipa ng mga bagay, that's already considered to be a physical violence. Okay. Aside from physical violence, we also have this what we call emotional abuse. Putting her down, making her feel about herself, feel bad about herself, calling her names, m making her think she's crazy, playing mind games, humiliating her, yung pagpapahiya. So that is also considered to be violence, pero emotional abuse nga lang siya. Okay? So even isolation. Diba, may mga nag invite sa kanyang friends niya, tapos pinigilan nyo, dyan ka lang sa bahay, you stay there. You cannot go outside. You cannot participate in parties. You cannot join reunions. That's already violence because you're using isolation naman. So, hinihiwalay mo siya. Para mo siyang kinukulong. Okay? Yeah, meron din tayong tinatawag na economic abuse. Preventing her from getting or keeping a job. Making her ask for money. Giving her an allowance. Taking her money. So, kinuha niyo yung pwede to sa... Pwede rin itong maging violence against men. Like, kinuha nyo lahat ng income niya. Tapos, umihingi na nanda lang siya sa'yo. So, pwede rin yun. It's also an economic abuse. Or pwede rin pinigilan niya yung asawa niya na magtrabaho. Diyan ka, lang, diyan ka na lang sa bahay. Huwag ka na magtrabaho. Bigyan na lang kita na. Pero, pero, gusto naman ng asawa niya na mag magtrabaho din. For economic participation, for self-fulfillment, pero hindi siya pinayagan, that's already an economic abuse. Okay, meron pa yan. Using male privilege. 
So, treating her like servant, kasi nga, parang, pag lalaki daw, mas may privilege, privilegio. So, ganon. Using male privilege is also an example of violence against women. And, pag ganibaw, may mga anak na, ginagamit na pang threat yung mga anak, so that's already violence against women. Okay? So, that is another gender bias manifestation. So, here are violence against women and children manifests itself whether in physical, sexual, and in psychological forms. Uh, worldwide, ito yung mga types of violence we have here or different types of violence against women and children. Na-recognize na to ha, intimate partner violence, sexual violence and harass harassment, human trafficking, female genital mutilation, and child marriage, they are considered to be different types of violence against women and children. Meron din tayo ngayon since uh, lahat na ngayon online. This is another gender bias manifestation. Diba it has started from objectification. Parang yung katawan ng babae ginagawang object. So like here in the illustration. Uh, ano yan, parang beer. Tapos nakadrawing dyan yung katawan ng babae. So that is what we call objectification. Because of that stereotypes pwede niya mag sa prostitution and right now yung cyber sex. Okay? Nakadalasan ang mga biktima ay mga batang babae. Okay, meron na rin mga lalaking biktima ng cyber sex. So, that is another gender bias manifestation. Uh, ano na nga rin yan? Para siya, kasama na rin siya sa violence. to Ingat-ingat din tayo dito kasi another gender bias manifestation is yung pambabastos online. Now, nakarinig ako ng reklamo na may mga estudyante nagsasend ng mga pictures na hindi ka aya-aya o may touch ng kabastusan. So, bawal yun. Yan yung another gender bias manifestation na hindi naman lagi ang biktima ay mga estudyante. Sometimes teachers can also be victims. Okay? So, meron, na, meron din tayong magkakaroon, I think magkakaroon din kayo ng orientation on RA 11.313 na ang anti-bastos law, wala na nga niyan. Hindi na yan ang biktima lagi like estudyante. Ang perpetrator ay teacher. Hindi na ganun. Pwede na ngayon ang biktima ay teacher, ang perpetrator ang estudyante. So, pwede yan kayong makasu... Uh, pwedeng... Uh, administrative sanctions or dismissal ang mangyayari dyan. Kaya, iwas tayo dyan. So, wag, mag, wag maging bastos kahit na online pa yan. Okay? And online also, uh, we can gather more, we can gather concrete evidences kasi madali lang naman tayo mag-screenshot ng online. Okay? So, I think you will have another orientation on RA 11.313 para malaman nyo rin yung mga iba't ibang type ng pambabastos. Para you are aware, and then maiwasan natin yun. Ito lang, isha-share ko lang to sa inyo. Kasi maganda to, ano, hello, love, goodbye. So, if you can relate. They love each other. Yung, yung, baba, yung lalaki gusto niya, i-control yung babae para hindi na sila magkalayo. Pero, nilet go din niya for the fulfillment dun sa babae. So, if you have partners, we, we also try to be supportive. Kahit babae yan o lalaki, maging Magsuportahan lang para maiwasan natin yung gender bias manifestations in our relationship. Um, another way is to communicate. If we have misunderstanding, hindi naman kailangan dumaan pa sa physical abuse or emotional abuse. But if you can communicate, that would be a lot better. Okay, So that we can address the issues at hindi tayo magkaroon ng gender bias and discrimination and also gender-based violence. Of course, our vision is this. Freedom from violence. Freedom from harassment. Personal development. And of course, to have control over one's body. Now, hindi lang naman sabi nila. Pag gender training, but parang lagi naman yan sa mga babae. Let's take a look at this one also. Male oppression. Meron din tayong gender stereotype where instead sabi natin lalaki, 
has to be strong. Hindi pwedeng weak yan. Hindi pwedeng umiyak yan. Okay? If kayo, nung bata kayo, are you allowed to cry? Or lala, kalalaki mo tao, iyak ka na iyak. Sinabihan ba kayo ng ganong ng magulang nyo? So, pag nasabihan kayo ng ganun, that is already an example of gender bias. Manifestation. Kasi nga doon sa gender stereotype natin na pag lalaki, they are always strong at hindi pwedeng iyakin. So, do you think that gender stereotype can lead to a big problem? What do you think? Okay, it can actually lead to a bigger problem. At ano yun? Tingnan natin. Okay, I want you to look at this graph. We have here male and female suicide rates. So, saan mas mataas ang suicide rates? Sabi nila, pag sa attempted, mas mataas ang babae. According to a, a survey, pag attempted, mas mataas ang babae. Pero, pag yun talagang suicide, yun talaga nangyari, mas mataas ang cases ng mga lalaki. Kasi nga, they are oppressed to show you their feelings. Hindi sila pwedeng maging emotional because they should be strong. So, they cannot express their emotions. In that way, wala silang mapagsabihan. So, pag hindi na nila kaya, they just commit suicide. So, that is also a gender concern. Kasi nga, mas marami din ang mga lalaki na nagkukumit ng suicide. Bakit kaya? Yun nga, because we are trained or they are trained to be strong na hindi maging emotional. Yan, men, boys and men are not expected to need closeness, reassurance, attention. If a boy or man asks for help, they are seen to be weak. Okay? So, yan yung stereotype natin. Na, hindi equal or hindi fair para sa mga lalaki. I would like to share you this one. Never apologize for being sensitive or emotional. Let this be a sign that you've got a big heart and aren't afraid to let others see it. Showing your emotions is a sign of strength. So, tandaan natin yun ha. Okay lang na mag-express ng emotion. Huwag natin kim-kimin yan para hindi tayo mag-lead to suicide. Okay, another gender bias manifestation naman sa mga lalaki. Why doctors are worried over male rape cases? In Nairobi, wherein doctors are worried that men may not be sincere about being raped by women. So, totoo rin na may mga rape cases daw. Kaya lang, dahil nga parang nakakahiya na lalaki ang na-rape, so may mga unreported cases na rape cases ng mga lalaki. So, that is also a gender bias manifestation kasi pwede rin hindi sila uh, pinaniniwalaan. Okay, because nga, sa stereotype na sinasabing men are actually stronger. So, paano sila marirate ng babae? Okay? Okay, so that ends my discussion about gender bias manifestations. So, there are so many examples na makikita nyo kung meron ng gender bias. We have started from the educational setup and then outside education na pwede liba, sa in your relationship with your partner or pwede siyang home setup, then you can now recognize if there would be gender bias manifestations which could lead to gender-based violence, okay? As I have mentioned, in education, our role is to eliminate gender stereotypes kasi yun yung ugat ng gender inequality, gender discrimination, and gender bias. So, I hope we have contributed in increasing the awareness about this matter and also para ma-reorient kayo so that, yun nga, sama-sama natin ma-attain ang gender equality. Thank you very much for listening and kung may questions kayo, just comment down below and then we will try to answer your questions. Okay, I hope you have learned something and also share this knowledge. So that you can also contribute in eliminating gender stereotypes so that we can all together, we can attain gender equality and also we will have respect to everyone regardless of gender. Okay, bye everyone!